Everybody, this is Christian Buckley with another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm here today with Matthias. Welcome. Thank you, Chris. Well, why don't, why don't you introduce introduce yourself? Who you are? Where you are? What you do? Oh, that's uh, that's a quick story. Uh, my name is Matthias, and uh, I am currently uh, sitting in Denmark. Uh, that's Scandinavian. Um, I'm working at a company called Mindcore. I've been there for like one year. I've been a consultant for 16 years, I believe, ever since I get got out of school. So I don't know uh, how to be hired in as a uh, internal. <laughs> well, guy. it's all changed anyway, so it doesn't matter, you know. So uh, it really, so so yeah, so consult consultancy has been my 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 whole life, right? So. I'm really uh, keen on helping people. That's my DNA. Um, I really like that, uh, seeing different offices, seeing different customers, seeing different, yeah, you know, everyone has their own way of doing stuff. So, uh, yeah, but uh, my daily work is like uh, doing Intune stuff. And we shouldn't say Intune, it's Microsoft Endpoint Manager, right? So, right. but 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 yeah. Um, been doing a lot of config manager uh, ever since. I've been doing a lot of automation, MSI packaging. Um, I, that was actually what I started with um, in 2004. And the Windows installer is actually from 2000 when the Microsoft Office package 2000 came out, right? Yep. So in that time, it was actually kind of hard to create MSI packages. Now we have all these tools and they do all this automated stuff for you. And I mean, the tool is like, or you know, the technology is like 20 years old now. 20, yeah, so- I know there's a lot of changes that are happening in that space within uh, Microsoft as well. Oh yeah, and, and, and now we introduce uh, all this kind of uh, virtualization stuff, uh, app, app, uh, MSIX, uh, UVP apps, et cetera, right? From, from the store and yeah, things are transitioning towards other and newer stuff. That's, uh, that's the ecosystem, right? Well, as we started talking about, I know that everybody's always interested and I'm sure you know, being a brand new MVP, uh, uh, you know, you'll get this question a lot is like, how do you become an MVP? So what is your story? What was your path into an MVP? Hmm. Yeah. What was my path? I, I, I originally, I, I, I didn't get uh, or go for the MVP at all. Uh, I just like to, um, I, I like to share knowledge. That's actually just uh, part of my DNA. So I've been doing a lot of uh, LinkedIn posting, Twitter posting, et cetera. And that's, that's considered micro blogging, right? So uh, once I shifted company from, from the one where I were partner for 13 years, um, I started blogging and something that has been what I actually wanted to do, uh, but didn't have the time. So now I came into a brand new uh, company. They didn't have like all the history. I didn't have all the history because I was I was like number four in, in the other company. So I had a lot of history and we grew to like 250 people. Mm -hmm. So I had a lot of responsible that I wasn't hired to do actually. So of course that took up all my time. So, so now I actually had no like strings attached. So I could do whatever I, I, I really like to do. So starting blogging once I, I came to Mindcore and, and um, yeah, I, I kind of liked to analyze stuff in depth and then um, actually explain to people, why are you going to use this piece of technology? Because many people actually don't know anything about the technology, right? Uh, the fundamentals, everybody likes to go out and say, ah, oh, you're going to do this and this and this, but what are the real fundamentals behind? That's a real difference. I mean, because clearly you have with most uh, any 
technical solution. There's going to be plenty of, you know, Microsoft is no, no different. You know, any, any uh, uh, you know, OEM, any development firm, your product company is going to walk you through like the how to go and deploy, how to go and, and configure, and then specific scenarios around that. So a lot of that guidance on how to go through steps one through 10 to do that are provided. But what's often missing are a lot of the scenarios into industries, into different uh, user types, um, you know, the, the why behind it, what's the business value that's driving it. And so that's, I mean, it, there's still a lot of value in, in talking about the how and demonstrating how, how to go and do this. But what I, I you know, a, a lot of what I do over in a completely different space, I'm come from the SharePoint and Microsoft Teams world and productivity collaboration side of things. You know, I find myself so much of every presentation also includes a chunk of information about, you know, why, why you would use this or why you wouldn't use it, why you would remain in your, on your old system or your old process, um, it, you know, and, and having a, a justification for moving across, you know, understanding exactly. the, the why is important, especially if you're put, trying to push that change through your organization. Yeah, because why should I buy this? Why should I put this into my organization? Why should I buy you as a consultant to come here and spend our money, right? right. Uh, that's not the goal. The why is that you need to manage your devices and we've been hit by COVID and, and we've all worked home. And okay, so how, how are we going to approach this? Uh, we have a VPN solution, okay, yeah. And that was like for 10% of the work and, and, and not 100% of our workers. So how are we going to approach that? We need to, to push uh, patch management every month to our devices. We need to, on a certain level, patch management on third-party applications. We need some kind of compliance in, 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 in regards to having users using our infrastructure, et cetera. So, how are you going to do that? How are you going to leverage that? And 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 I, I, I mean, Microsoft released the Intune for like 10 years ago, but, mm -hmm. but it hasn't really been out there for real. It started to be uh, uh, a standard, but but haven't. It has been config manager mostly. And and what we see now because of the licensing and, 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 and people opening up to this cloud tool is like, okay, so soon we see 50-50 actually. And in, in, I, I believe it was 2022 we are looking into where, where the graph was like 50-50 on, on, this, on the config manager part and the Intune part. So, so COVID has actually been driving IT for the last one and a half year. So why should you buy these cloud licenses? You should do that if you are able to leverage anything in the cloud, if you're allowed to as a customer. And, and you should do that because you have all these workers working from everywhere, right? So, so I mean, um, you have so many good tools in one toolbox to actually leverage in a nice interface and and. If you're doing iOS or Mac OS or Windows or whatever, the interface look the same. And, and, and I'm actually educating a school or, or the, the IT guys of the school. And they said, oh, this is so much more easy than the other MDM system that I had. So uh, I'm, I, I really like to teach that. And, and that is why you should, you should buy such a solution. So that's much of my work that like, yeah, right there. Yeah. How, how much do you see with when Microsoft's talking so much about, you know, the hybrid workspace. And so that obviously has driven a lot of change of strategy for organizations that are thinking about that. And there are some that are, that really believe like, oh yeah, we're going to kind of go back to, you know, more of the way that it was. And, and others say it's like, no, this is like, this is the, we were, I would argue that we were moving this direction even before COVID, where uh, it just just with the bring your own device, you know, push where people want to have flexibility. They want to have, you know, the, the, these personal devices that they'd be able to use for their for their work. So, organizations were already thinking about some of these problems, 
it's not just now that everybody's working from home. That certainly accelerated it for a lot of organizations. Mm -hmm. So what's, is, is anything really kind of changed? Is it just that it accelerated or is something changed in the way that they're thinking about managing their devices? Yeah, I, I believe uh, something have, have changed. I believe that the future companies actually uh, having it like a, a settlement in the agreement that you can work from home two or three days a week. Because uh, right now I'm sitting at a customer four days a week and I work with uh, one guy from, from the States. I work with one from, from Philippines and two guys from, from India. And the rest is from Denmark. So, so okay, should I go to the office to go into a meeting room and to why? Why right. is that? Uh, is that just for the boss to like? Okay, he's actually not sitting at his desk. Uh, now he's not working. Now he's going to grab coffee again. Why not set the expectations? And if the goals are like. You set you set an expectation, and then your workers will succeed. I believe right. most will. So, I believe that in the future we will have much more working from home. Yeah, and I don't know if it's true, but I heard that Twitter took down their their offices. I I I, I, I don't know. I, yeah, no. There's a lot a lot of companies, and so I'm born and raised in the San Francisco Bay Area. And did several startups. I escaped the state uh, over 20 years ago, um, but I just was done in the early 2000s. Um, and uh, with the commute, I was commuting an hour and a half, two hours each way, every single day. Uh, and uh, so I've been working. I, I've told this story a, a few times, uh, but so I've worked in collaboration technology most of my career. Uh, since going back into the, the late 90s, specifically around collaboration technology. And, and most of the companies that I worked for um, had policies against working from home. Here we were creating technology to give teams the flexibility to plug in and connect and work securely wherever they were globally. And yet these companies, including Microsoft, the teams mm -hmm. I worked on, you know, we're very down on, uh, I was at Microsoft for three and a half years, very, very down on uh, people working remotely. And uh, it, it, so it's been you know, interesting to see that evolution, see that change as the technology certainly has caught up the ability for more and more people to, to do this. Broadband, of course, ha having uh, to be there, but you need to do it in a secure and well-managed way, well-governed way. You can't just open up wide and hope that people go and do that. that's where you have, you know, intellectual property lost. You have, you have problems. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so it's, it's great to see that we're, you know, getting to where more and more organized you know, organizations are realizing that they don't need to, to your point, like have your goals, have your commitments, have data driven performance of people's roles and what they need to accomplish, be very clear on what people need to do, but then get out of the way and let them do it. Mm -hmm. Not everybody can work within that model. It's not for everybody, but not every role is for everybody. You know, exactly. Some people just perform better in an office setting surrounded by people that that side of things. And and they they might they might be high performing in that office and yet struggle working on their own, you know, even with all of the web meetings. Exactly. And, and I mean, if you are in a store and, and you need to put up groceries on, 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 you can't really work from home, right? But if you're sitting in IT or communication or and not working in a, in a project where you could sit in a room and brainstorm, and, and I mean, come on, we should sit at home. It's, it's, um, it's a waste of time to, to drive to the city, right? And, and spend one and a half uh, hour drive one way and, and, and then back and stress to, to get the kids from school. I have three kids, so <laughs> I am busy when I go off work, right? So having these extra hours that I could actually block or I could actually have this meeting with you or it, it means a lot in, in my everyday and, and, and in, in the setup that I am in for, for these four days a week. It's, it's like, 
Okay, so every day at 12 or one o'clock, we have a daily meeting. Everybody meets and we say hi and what is your assignments, etc. And of course, we have we have the Scrum Master. So so we actually are agile and 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 working uh, after 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 such uh, principles. And I believe it it really works. And and everybody can work, even though we have COVID, etc. So yeah. it makes a lot of sense. That, I I think you nailed it right there. It's having that communication, and then having that accountability. I mean that having that you know daily Scrum. And and I've done that, you know, in person. Again, I've I've managed that way where every morning people hated that at first, but then when they start to see how efficient we became because we were doing that every morning and how we were able to reprioritize dynamically, you know, you you can do that so much of that remotely. Uh, it, it's it's funny that you see people. I don't have one in front of me, but these mugs that you know, like that email could have been you know a, a Teams meeting or you know, hey that. That uh, I like somebody sh showed me they had a that that uh, you know Teams meeting could have been an email mug was pretty funny um, because it's true. I mean sometimes it, it you, know, you don't need to meet for everything and sometimes the email is the right thing for that. But mm. you can accomplish so many of these things and very efficiently. And letting people again go drive and break up their schedule so that they can take care of family, that they can do all kind of all those other things and and. Um, well, it's like we were talking before we started recording. Both of us have, you know, teams that are spread out around the world. And, and so it doesn't work with a nine to five schedule yeah. for, for our core functions. And so if we're having meetings that are starting well before the normal workday in our regions and well into the evenings, like when do I have time to go to the store or take care of other family issues or things I don't worry about that now. I know my meetings. I know my deliverables. I go take care of the personal things as I need to within mm -hmm. that schedule. And I just build it in the schedule and I just don't think about it and worry about it. And no one's pressing me on, wait a second, you went to a doctor's appointment in the middle of the day? You know, it, when it's like I had no calls, it was the best time to go. And I'll be on calls, as I mentioned, until eight o'clock tonight. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, so. Uh, you know, we, the, that conversation never happens in my company. Hopefully <laughs> in fewer and fewer companies that are having those types of conversations. Yeah. And I, I mean, I like to go run, for example, in, in my lunch break. So I have, we have like 30 minutes, so, so it's not much, but you know, we can flex. So I could have 45 minutes for a, 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 a running break and, and it gives me so much. Uh, I have back pains, etc. So I need to train. Uh, I need to to take care of myself, my body. The the sitting job, the office job, is the world's most dangerous job, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we have diabetes. We have <laughs> blood problems. We have uh, blood pressure problems. We have so many diseases that are connected to sitting in front of, of a computer daily, right? So. Mm -hmm. It's really important to exercise, and 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 I do that almost every day, and that is also one of the things working from home that are so flexible. I can do that because once the the kids come home, I have to be here. Like uh, right. we we have dinner at six, and yeah, and then they go to bed, and yeah, and you know how it is. They yeah. they scream if they don't get their schedule uh, right. Um, right. Yeah, so I mean, it's perfect, at least for my situation. I I I, I couldn't imagine that uh, many others have the same situation. So so, really, it's a it's a win win for me this um, working from home situation. Well, I think that we're yeah I I, I agree. I think that we're going to see a permanent change. I, I'm I, I'm excited to see it. Not only just because I I work within the collaboration space and. You know the tools, the technology that I work with, uh, you know, with Microsoft and with my company, you know, are have becoming essential to driving a lot of this new way of working. So, um, you know, that's that's great too. But I I saw the potential in the space, you know, 20 years ago. That's why I got <laughs> into it. Yeah. But uh, well, Matthias, I really appreciate your time talking today, getting getting to know you and and more about your journey. And for people that want to find out more or connect with you, what are the best ways they can reach you through social channels? Uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, Twitter, it's uh, M Melkerson, 
it's a very Danish uh, last name, but uh, yeah, uh, I tweet a lot uh, of, of news of, of, of the mem suite. Uh, LinkedIn, where my name is Matthias Mikkelsen, and um, I do a, a lot of uh, things in there. I, I was uh, awarded with official contributor in a space where a, um, a Spanish guy actually created a LinkedIn fora where we have uh, 11,000 members. Wow. Uh, and I was actually awarded that before I got the MVP. So that was uh, one of the first real uh, where you, you could say, oh, wow, uh, why am I awarded with this? And it, it was actually um, a prize uh, that I, I believe it was sponsored by One E or something with the prize money in $1,000 um, for, for for being the top acknowledged uh, blog post. And I believe Damien was the one that ran away with that prize, but I had two blog posts coming in the top 20 there. And that was the first step for me to be recognized. And, and uh, with all my microblogging, it was like, okay, other MVPs were like, do you wanna be a MVP? Uh, I don't know. Is, is, is it involved? good to be I mean, uh, MVP? We don't have those cash prizes and things for, uh, for an MVP. <laughs> uh, obviously, there's value in being a member of the community and the access oh, that we get. So. The, the name MVP, it does give a lot of followers. I, I can tell you that. Uh, I grew from, well, uh, Adam Adam Gross, he's also in the United States. He, he, he retweeted one of my things and said, okay, if you want to know what's going in or on in the mem workspace, go follow uh, this dude. And I, I, I think I got 250 followers, just he uh, recognizing that, right? So, yeah. and, and yeah, he was uh, one of the first actually recognizing that, that he wanted me to go to the MVP program. So he nomin nominated me in, in February uh, this year. And I was like, okay, what an honor. And, and, and I filled out all these uh, questions that Microsoft had and like, uh, uh, what have you been blogging? What are you doing on, on social medias, uh, et cetera. And it's, it's like, okay, am I going to put in every conversation I had on Facebook here or how do I become a MVP? And I was like, no, that's too much work. So. I'm going to, to put in every blog post and I'm going to put in my profiles for social media. And that, that's, that's it because that is a lot of work too. So, and, and then, okay, so let's see what happens. And then the time went by and, and, and Damien, he was asking several times, uh, have you received anything from the MVP program? And I was in, in contact with uh, Tina Stendhal, which is um, the, 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 MVP lead, yeah, exactly. Yep. Here in 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 uh, for actually uh, Holland and uh, Belgium, uh, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Finland, maybe some more countries. Um, and 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 she said uh, she she wanted to make sure that uh, the list I've uh, added to to the to the nomination that that was it. And I was like, yeah it is isn't it good enough or what's happening behind the scene right and one day i was going to scout uh meeting and right there one minute over five it says congratulations on your mvp i was like okay stop sending spam and i was like yeah <laughs> writing yeah. to to Kathy and is this uh is this, this uh, I've heard this... a couple of stories where people where it went to spam so they didn't they never really saw the email no. and then no. but when the package showed up and they <laughs> went back through their spam and were like oh oh and found that <laughs> or or asked for it to be resent which you can do as well I okay heard people like deleting it losing that email and and, uh, and asking for that to, to be resent but well it's you know, again, congratulations on that. As you know, as Thank you know, you it's, it's uh, you know, the process to become an MVP. It's kind of a black box. Oh yeah, it's different for different people, and some people do a lot of public speaking and not a lot of blogging. Other people are all about, um, you know, uh, um, 
like out on the Microsoft tech community, uh, different uh, forums and answering questions. Um, others that are usually MVPs, uh, are, you know, no matter where they come from, are involved in our local communities and helping organize events or just volunteering for events. So you know, especially one thing that about working from home during the last year is the number of opportunities to contribute to online activities has gone way up. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's something that will, I think, uh, won't drop off as much as you'd think once, once we start to see in-person events start up again. I still think that there, we're gonna have a lot more online, a lot of hybrid events. Mm. Um, so somebody who's interested in getting involved you know, I'd say, you know, just uh, keep doing what you're doing for the community. There's nothing wrong with having a goal to go and become an MVP, but just realize that there's not a checklist of like, okay, I've done everything on that list. Therefore, where's the recognition? Like, no, that's it. Again, it's a black box. Exactly. And, and it also matters in, in which field you actually go in, because some areas is very hard. Uh, enterprise mobility, which I am MVP in, is one of the hard ones, because there are so many. Um, and um, you need to do something on Config Manager, and you need to do something on Intune. It's not enough just covering one of those, because mm -hmm. It's a large environment. Many, many, many customers have Config Manager, and you need to know as an MVP how to transition workloads from one system to the other system and make use of that cloud. What is the first step, for example? Oh, you can go, you can you can do tenant attach, and that is a very simple process. Going in in the back end, nothing really happens on on your clients, right? That could be a first step into the cloud. The other step could be co-managed where you move one workload or maybe you don't uh, move anything, then you get instant the wipe. Um, so so exactly if you, if you have a device that are stolen or things, something like that, you can wipe the device. Mm -hmm. That's the instant stuff you get from the cloud, right? And then you haven't even touched the workloads and there are seven, right? So you have a lot of ways going into the cloud and in the tempo that you really uh, are able to leverage as a company and you don't even have to go full cloud you can be in hyper state if you want well let's see how how many years microsoft are going to support that but but yeah so i mean the thing here is if you are allowed to go into the cloud we have a lot of tools that you can use in order to transition in your own tempo so you don't have to get rid of all your GPOs at once. You don't have to get rid of all your login scripts at once, all your printers set up. You don't have to like have the universal uh, print uh, going on at, at the first. Mm -hmm. uh, you can do that in, in the tempo that, um, that you're able to do. So just take it easy, think and analyze before you do anything. Um, and if you are, going for having an advice or two, well, buy one or two, three consultant hours. It's not that expensive to get a, a, a good idea of how to start and, and where to start, really. It's, it's really good money to, to, to spend not to having done something and, and then you have to break it down and, and start over. And maybe you ruined the boss's uh, computer because you <laughs> ended up in a state that is not supported. And now you not have to read that ever it. happens. I know that never happens, but, but okay, it does, but that, yeah, that's great advice though. But that that's, that's actually one of the benefits of you know, being an MVP, but uh, you know, people have questions about this. I mean, I would say, you know, Hey, reach out to somebody like an MVP, like Matias. And, and even though you're not, you know, doing that kind of consulting role anymore, you know others that are within the space and can provide some advice on that. And so that's a great piece of advice though. Go buy you know, a couple hours, two, three hours of an MVP's time to walk you through and give you a baseline of what you're doing today and the different options that you have available based on your priorities. That's, that's a great place to start. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, and, Matthias, and, uh... Yeah. Really appreciate your time. Uh, I need to run, but uh, it will, you know, for those that of course watch, you can find all this out on the Buckley Planet uh, blog. 
and uh, out on uh, you know the Collab Talk page, out on YouTube, as well as on the Collab Talk podcast. And we'll tweet it out. We'll blast it out via the social channels with all of uh, all of Matias's uh, contact information as well. So thanks so much for your time today, and uh, let you get back to your family time this evening. <laughs> Thank you. Chris. Wow. Wow.